Hi, my name is Ali Simone, and I'd like to welcome you to the first episode of Dorm Guiding, where food is always easy, affordable, and tasty. And this is my assistant, Steve, and today we're going to be making pasta. So let's get ready to eat. All right, so today we're making pasta. And the ingredients that you can get for this are really easy. There's some tomatoes. We have garlic. Feta cheese. And spinach. Allie, where did you get all of these? Okay, well, let's do the test of the cheese. I got this at the calf and the cheese at the calf. So you can get spinach and the cheese um, easily and accessible. The other two ingredients I got at the local food store. And it wasn't that expensive. This was about two fifty, and cheese, it depends on how much you get. And... The spinach, you know, depends also how much you get, but it's really, really inexpensive and easy. Also, of course, you're going to need pasta. Because, I mean, how can you have pasta without pasta? So, and the secret ingredient for when you're cooking the vegetables is olive oil. Easy, affordable, and you can also get that from the calf, but I bought it from Jesus Star. I've never seen that at the calf. Where would you pick that up there? The olive oil you can get from the uh, salad station, so just look for it. It's right next to the balsamic vinegar and sometimes even next to the, what is that, the barbecue sauce. Oh, okay. So, there you go. Great. All right, so let's get started. First thing on the list is to make sure you get the water boiling because that takes the most time when you're making pasta. Okay, so here we're going to go over to the stove. We're going to turn it on as high as possible because that decreases the time. Um, water boiling normally takes around 10 minutes, so you obviously want to get that started. Um, as Steve will lift up the lid, uh, you definitely want to fill it at least one third of the way in the pot, depending on how much pasta, up to a half of the pot. Um, obviously, less water equals less time to boil. So, okay. So we're going to wait for that, and now we're going to start prepping our ingredients. First things first. You're starting with the tomatoes, Ellie? Yep. Okay. Steve, what I would like you to do is cut up the tomatoes into halves. Because okay. that makes it easier to cook. It gets hot and it's just easier to get on your fork later. Okay. You don't want to make a mess when you're eating. All right. Okay, so, see? Perfect. You can separate them if you want. You don't have to. It doesn't make a difference. So that's how you do the tomatoes. So, while he's doing that, I'm going to start prepping the garlic for him to chop up. We're going to mince the garlic. You get a garlic coat, and it's usually covered in a little skin. So, first of all, press down. Make sure you don't hurt yourself because it's a little sharp sometimes. You're going to hear it make that noise nice and crinkly. Undo the little skin, and you're going to see that there's this nice garlic pod for you. How many cloves of garlic, Allie, do you want to use for this dish? Um, depends on how much garlic you like. I like a lot of garlic. Some people only like a little. Okay. Also, if you eat garlic, it normally tends to stay with you the whole day, and if you're touching it, then your hands are going to smell like garlic for at least a day and a half, even if you wash your hands several times. Okay, so if you liked garlic, would you want to say maybe use four or five, or... I would I say really... three cloves. Three cloves. I like four, but I just really like garlic, so... So normally between just one and three, you would say, is a good, is a good, is a good number? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so do you want me to show you how to do that? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay, so just start chopping in a little. Okay. Now, you obviously know that some pieces are going to be bigger than others just because of how it's shaped. So then right. you're going to move the knife around to try and get everything cut up to about the same size. And that's mincing garlic. Great. So now we're all set. Just waiting for that water to boil. Okay, so what I've done is I've 
set the pan on with heat about four and a half, a little between four and five, um, just so that it heats up a little bit. And now we're going to add the olive oil. You don't want to add too much because then it will splatter all over and it will ruin Steve's lovely shirt when he's oh. mixing everything. Thank you, Allie. You're welcome. Once you've cooked um, a few of the ingredients, such as the tomatoes and the spinach in, then you can add a little more if it needs it. But otherwise, don't put too much oil splattering on your shirt. So we're just going to let that heat up for about 30 seconds. Add it in. You need your hand. We'll set that down. Get any oil on you. Make sure you wipe it off because you don't want to drop anything because your hands are slippery. And now I need the spoon. Oh. There you are. Thank you. Okay. So one of the important things to do when you're cooking garlic is if you see that it's cooking really fast and starting to brown really fast, you definitely want to turn the heat down because burned garlic is not what we're aiming for. We're aiming for just a little bit cooked, a little brown maybe, not too much. Golden, that's what we're looking for. So when you start to do that, do you turn the stove down a little bit or? Yes, definitely yeah. turn it down. Um, you'll know if you've ruined the garlic because it cooks really fast. Okay. So. Just a little bit more. I like that noise it's making too. That's how you know it's cooking. Yeah. All right, so now we're ready for the tomatoes. You can smell it. You can smell that we're ready. Okay, so we really like tomatoes here, so we're going to add about a cup, two cups of tomatoes. Now, if you don't like tomatoes, Ellie, I mean, you can still make this dish. Do you think there's anything you could add? What else do you think would be good in this dish? Definitely, if you don't like tomatoes, because I know a few of my friends don't, you can just use um, spinach and garlic. And um, you should definitely do that um, if the pasta is almost done. Like right now, we're almost done with the pasta being cooked. Spinach takes very little time to cook, so you would do that probably just before you're about to pour the pasta in the drain um, to get all the water out. Okay. So, now we can put a little bit more heat, and now we're going to drain the pasta, because we're all ready. Okay, so now we're ready to add the spinach. Steve is just going to add as much as he wants until I say done. I'm going to put it back on the stove. What should the heat be on while the spinach is cooking? Um, spinach cooks fast, so it's okay if you keep it on a little low. I'm just going to add it a little higher because we took it off the stove for a little bit. Okay. I'm also going to add a little more olive oil. What's the point of that? That's just to help coat it. Okay. Do you think that's good? That should be good for now. We'll see when it cooks down. Spinach, you'll see. Do you think you have a lot of spinach? And then once it starts cooking, it all shrinks down. Oh, really? Yep. Just make sure you get everything coated. What you should do is pour the pasta into the serving dish so that we can be ready to okay. get that all set. Okay, so... You can either pour it, just like I'm doing, directly on the pasta and then have everyone stir it when they are serving it. Or the way they do it in restaurants is they'll make enough for one dish of pasta and then they'll stir in the pasta with the stuff in the actual pan. That's a really good idea if you're making it for yourself. If you're making it for a bunch of people and you don't have a big enough pan, just put it on the serving dish. So, time to eat. <laughs> Okay, so now we're ready to eat. Remember, one ingredient that we didn't add, you add this definitely last, just as you're about to eat it. For those people who like cheese, I'm actually lactose intolerant, so I'm just going to put it on half of the pasta. Make sure you crumble up all of the balls of the feta so that you get it all over. Um, also, if you notice that Elise's place doesn't have any tomatoes, this is another great way to make this dish. Uh, she doesn't like tomatoes, so beforehand I just cooked up some spinach with garlic, and there you go. You had a different kind of dish. Same idea. Easy and affordable.
All right, so we're ready to eat. Thank you for watching, and we'll hope that you join us again for next time. And if you want any tips on how to make this, definitely check out our Facebook group. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.